Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> uh, thank you from the profoundness of my heart to the worship team for allowing the Father to use them in such a beautiful way to bless this body. So, uh, thank you, Father. The Torah portion for this week is titled Vayachel, which means he gathered. And it is chapters 35 to 38 and change in Exodus. And it begins with Moses giving everyone a reminder of the Shabbat. But I want to give you a little bit of context of where we are, right? So this is after the golden calf fiasco. Um, and Yah has renewed the covenant with Israel because he is full of mercy and grace. Amen. And this portion is the fulfillment of the commands that were given pretty much word for word of what's in this portion. Um, Ten chapters earlier, when he commanded or gave Moses the instructions for the building of the tabernacle, the furniture, and all the articles pertaining to the holy service. So now they're actually doing it. (sighs) And you know when the father, like... This one was for me. That's all I know. <laughs> like, I was meant to get this one again. Um, but I'll just, there were a few things that stood out to me, and I'm going to try to not be too long. But um, I'll start with the Shabbat command. So when Yah gave the instructions to Moses on the mountain, he finishes with a reminder of Shabbat. And this time, Mo, uh, Moses starts with the Shabbat commands and then goes into the work of the building the tabernacle. And I think that was really important um, because these people are about to embark on what's going to be, in my perspective, right? They're building the tabernacle where the creator of the universe's presence is going to abide amongst them. And that is probably the most important work of their lives. And still, he reminds them to Shabbat, like how important that. They're building the place, right? We know Shabbat is a shadow of being and resting in Yeshua. And they're building the place where the Father's presence can tabernacle with them, and yet they still have to stop their work and abide in him and Shabbat and rest in him. And that's really something that sets us apart in our faith, Um, you know, that it's not all just work, work, work. We can lean back in the arms of a loving Father. I'm hysterical from worship, so excuse me. But... It goes hand in hand with that. We are able, we have that privilege of leaning back in the arms of a loving father. We can rest and trust in him and take a break from our work, even if our work is for him. Um, And I know that everyone can relate to this, pastors and teachers and parents and spouses, intercessors. We get tired because we, since we're working for our king and in all of our zeal, we want to put everything we have into that. And many times find ourselves exhausted at, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the week. But to remember to take that time to Shabbat, to abide in his presence so that we can be recharged and continue working the work um, of the kingdom. And in this case, it's the tabernacle. So I wrote, do not let service replace intimacy with Yeshua. So that was like the first thing. Then, the second point that stood out to me was around verses 36, 3 to 7, and I could read it. Um, So, it says here, And they received from Moses all the contribution which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the set-apart place. But they still brought to him voluntary offerings every morning. So all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the set-apart place came, each from the work he was doing, and they spoke to Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord has commanded us to do. Then Moses commanded, and they sent this word throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman do any more work for the contribution of the set-apart place. And the people were withheld from bringing, for what they had was enough for all the work to be done, more than enough." And again, this is like a similar reminder. The work is finished, right, in Yeshua. And obviously we have our part in the Great Commission. And I feel like in our society and in the world, we forget rest. We forget that the work is finished. We forget or don't understand that our contributions do make a difference. And here we see the children of Israel, first of all, that's a dream, that there was 
an abundance of materials. It was an abundance of contributions for this work that the Father had commanded them to do. And to think that the work that we each do in our lives, in our homes, and in our workplaces, and in, in the body, it is enough, and it will be enough, and we will fulfill the Great Commission. I wasn't going to cry. And we will be with our king soon, so amen. amen. <laughs> One day. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> And now the third point um, in this. Uh, in verse 3510, he says, And let all the wise hearted among you come and make all that the Father that the Lord has commanded. And it's rendered as artisan in many versions. And then I found out I wanted to like dig deeper and see what the Hebrew can be rendered as as well. And it's wise hearted. And I thought of my LinkedIn profile that I haven't used in 10 years that says Tiffany Marmel artist. And I was like, wow, imagine if I just changed that to wise hearted, right? That's powerful. So any artists out there, you are wise hearted. Um, but I wanna stick on this point because that is very profound. Um, in this portion, we are introduced to two men who are pretty much charged with the building of the tabernacle, you can say that they are like the foremen of the job, right? And one of them is named Bezalel, and the other is Aholiab. And these men were given, I wrote it down, because it was a lot. They were given the spirit of Elohim, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and all manner of workmanship, and the ability to teach. Um, they were engravers, designers, tapestry makers, metal workers, jewel cutters, wood carving, and artistic works that they were masters of. And as an artist, I can paint, and that's about it. So that's amazing that they were given that many gifts. And so whenever there's names, I like to dig into the meaning of the names and praise the Father, because late last night he brought it full circle. So Bezal El translates to in the shadow of God. And it's really cool because I like to look at the lineage, I guess, uh, and read it in English as it would be read in Hebrew. So just because it sounds so cool, I'm going to read it to you. It's Bezalel, which means in the shadow of God, the son of my light, the son of the noble from the tribe of praise. And in Hebrew, that's just so much more powerful than English. Um, so I thought that was beautiful. Now, Aholiab's name means the tent of the father. And I'm going to get to that. But let's go back to in the shadow of God. Now, we know that our God is the creator of all things. And are we not made in his image? We, therefore, right, we are made to be creative people. And this portion really focuses in on, a, like, there was so much intricate work being done for the tabernacle, Right? And it was done by the hands of the people. So I look at the worship team being up here. And when I come up here to talk and I pray to the Father, you speak, don't let it be from me. But yet the Father delights in using their vocal cords and using, I don't know, what he's, you know. He delights in partnering with us in this work. So that's what that reminded me of. And I think about the millennial kingdom. And I'm not a scholar like our pastor is, but... I think about what it would look like if the nations of the world submitted to our king and worshipped him and what Sukkot would look like. And every nation coming and bringing, because now we have culture, and culture is a beautiful thing, obviously, and obviously it's perverted in many ways, but imagine a culture dedicated to Yeshua coming to worship him. So we have like Indian culture and Chinese culture and Dominican culture and all these places that are going to come and worship our king in one place and how beautiful and amazing and intricate that's going to be. I don't know. So it's good to be creative with the Father, of course, and for his kingdom. Okay, now to Aholiab. And this one was the one I was struggling with. His name means the tent of the Father. And here we are, they're building the tabernacle. So I didn't really... I struggled with making the connection here, but then I realized it's a man and his name is the tent of the father. We are the tent. 
we are his dwelling place. What an honor. So we have all this stuff that they're writing about building this tabernacle, and it's just a shadow of us being his dwelling place. Like all of the work, he repeated it twice throughout scripture, and it's a lot of detail. But he cared about every detail in that tabernacle. Imagine how much more he cares and loves when he creates us in our mother's wombs. He's knitting each and every one of us together. So I realized that you and you and you are a holyab. You are the tent of the Father. And you are a holyab made bezalel. So you are the tent of the Father made in the shadow of God. So you are made in the image of our God. And he wants us to use our gifts and talents for the building up of the body. And in the midst of that, to remember to rest in him because the work is finished. And I'll end in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the way that you are able to use each and every one of us for your glory, for the growing of your kingdom, for the edification of the body, Father. I thank you that you are able to refine us and grow us and stretch us and use those things we struggle with in life to glorify you and to help us to help one another, Father. I thank you for the worship team and I thank you for every person here, Father, all of the beautiful gifts that we have that are used to glorify you, all of the teachers, Father, all of the mothers, the fathers, and just every person here, Father, even all of the children. And I thank you that when we work together, it is a beautiful symphony before your throne. In the name of your son, Yeshua, I pray.